Please join us in praying the prayer to Our Lady of Perpetual Help. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. O Mother of Perpetual Help, grant that I may ever invoke your powerful name, the protection of the living and the salvation of the dying. Pierce Mary, let your name henceforth be ever on my lips. Delay not, blessed Lady, to rescue me whenever I call on you. In my temptations, in my needs, I will never cease to call on you, ever repeating your sacred name, Mary, Mary. What a consolation, what sweetness, what confidence fills my soul when I utter your sacred name or even only think of you. I thank the Lord for having given you so sweet, so powerful, so lovely a name. But I will not be content with merely uttering your name. Let my love for you prompt me ever to hail you, Mother of Perpetual Help. Mother of Perpetual Help, Pray for me and grant me the favor I confidently ask of you. O Mother of Perpetual Help, through grace and intercession, we ask for your assistance for an end to the coronavirus pandemic, for the continual growth of holiness in our parish, for an increase in our daily lives of the fire of our Catholic faith, for the needs and intentions of our parish, for the intentions of those for whom the candle before your image is burning this week, and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph, our Father and Protector. Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton, our Holy Patron. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to God, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that celebrating the mysteries of the Lord's resurrection, we may merit to receive the joy of our redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but Jews. There were some Cypriots and Cyrenians among them, however, who came to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks as well, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. All you nations, praise the Lord. All you nations, praise the Lord. His foundation upon the holy mountains the Lord loves. The gates of Zion, more than any dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. All you nations, praise the Lord. I tell of Egypt and Babylon, among those who know the Lord, of Philistia, Tyre, Ethiopia. This man was born there, and of Zion they shall say, One and all were born in her, and he who has established her is the Most High Lord. All you nations, praise the Lord. They shall note when the peoples are enrolled, This man was born there, and all shall sing in their festive dance, My home is within you. All you nations, praise the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The feast of the dedication was taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus walked about in the temple area on the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long are you going to keep us in suspense if you are the Christ? Tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. During the time when we have public masses, hopefully we will be able to do that again real soon. But one of the things that I always found very interesting, particularly on Sundays and weekends, and depending on what season we were in, and by season I'm not talking by um, natural seasons, I'm talking about sports seasons, you very quickly knew standing up here looking out at the people who were the Bear fans, who were the Packer fans, who were the Viking fans, and then you would go to the summer and you quickly saw who were the Cubs fans, who were the Sox fans, who were the Brewer fans, or whatever particular team. 
or even during um, the college season, you'll have different people that will come. That individuals will be very proud of wearing that sports paraphernalia, or even regarding the colleges that they joined to, that they went to, or their high schools or whatnot. They're very quick to allow that to be seen. But the question is, is you know, when I see that, I know exactly who a Packer fan and who is a Bear fan. But would they be able to look at us and say, there is a Christian, there is a Christian, or there is a Catholic? Something very unique happened in Antioch, as we saw in our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, that the people outside of the church, so this was not a name that the church took for itself, that all of a sudden they woke up and says, well, I'm calling myself a Christian. No. It was the people of Antioch who, in seeing the disciples, in seeing the followers of the Lord, in hearing what they were preaching, in seeing how they were living, that they were following this Christ, the Anointed One, that the people of Antioch themselves said, you know what, we're going to call them Christians. Because this was who they followed. This was who they were passionate about. There was something very different about them. And people could see that. They could see that these were people who had a deep love for our Lord Jesus. And they allowed that love to influence how they lived, how they dressed, how they spoke, how their very lives were conducted. Christ was very much at the center of their lives. They had had a profound conversion that their hearts had turned to the Lord. And that is why we hear that when Barnabas went there, that he told them to be faithful, to continue to have that zeal, to be passionate. And I think one of the dangers that as we find ourselves in this stay-at-home order is the danger can be that the passion for our Lord will dull. Because the things that we took for granted, the things that we would turn to in order to build up our lives or to claim the title of Christian or Catholic, it's something that on some level we're not able to do right now. Coming to Mass during the week or coming to Mass on a Saturday evening or Mass on a Sunday. And so I think in a very real sense what our Lord is inviting all of us to do is to fortify the home front to fortify how we are living our lives in the world and in the home, bearing the name of Christian. How are we doing in order to reflect that? And one of the things that we may find is that as the stay-at-home order extends, that we find ourselves being put more and more to the test. More and more to the test. Patience is quickly going. Tolerance is quickly going. Compassion for people that you live with, all those things, all those things begin to drain out. I think it's probably very safe to say that husbands and wives are probably up to here with one another because they're constantly seeing themselves more than they would when things were quote unquote normal. Or even the tensions between parents and their children. Or even amongst siblings. That we find that on a natural level that we're up to here in how we're doing. We can only take it for so much longer. And we are being shown then how important the grace of God is in our lives. That our lives are not built on natural foundations, but that our lives as disciples of the Lord are meant to be built upon the supernatural foundations of God and upon grace. There but for the grace of God go I. How often we will use that phrase when we look at the world and we'll see people doing different things and whatnot, and the temptation then is to point the finger and say, well, that's not me. But we always have to remember, there but for the grace of God go I, that because of our fallen humanity, because of the original sin, because of concupiscence, that within us we have the capacity to do great good or we have the capacity to do great evil. It is our cooperation with God's grace that fortifies us and prevents us from falling into this or falling into that. And so we should never take for granted 
the graces that God gives to us. And in particular right now, to take advantage of the graces that are being offered, that we are able to avail ourselves of. The grace of being able to go to confession. The grace of being able to go to adoration in the parking lot. The grace of being able to come into our church, which we are now reopening limited hours. You know, to be able to take advantage of those graces. To be fortified by the Lord. To allow a hunger to receive our Lord to compel us to greater acts of holiness. You know, I was remember I was reading, I can't remember who I was reading, but the temptation is, is that sometimes we will hear from the faithful saying they want to receive Holy Communion. And they will see it as the via negativa, seeing it as a punishment, seeing it as this and whatnot, and, and seeing it in a negative light. But I was remember, now I remember what it was. I was. There was an interview with Pope Benedict. And Pope Benedict, this was when he was Cardinal Ratzinger. One of the things that he had said was, and this was during normal times. This was during normal times where we had daily mass and we had, or we, I mean, we still have daily mass, but talking about daily public masses and whatnot. That he says in a very real sense that there should be times where we choose to abstain from the Eucharist that we should choose to abstain even when we're able to receive it because there's a greater opportunity for grace. And part of what the Pope was saying, and as I said, this was not when he was the Pope at the time, he was saying is that people can take that grace for granted. And so he, one of the, I think there was a great lesson that he was giving us there in saying, so instead of seeing it in the via negativa, in the negative way, which the devil loves to play with, and that he loves to salt the wounds and start to do all these things and whatnot. To see it as an opportunity, not necessarily as a sacrifice that is where I'm giving something up, but is to see it as something that's a willing sacrifice that I'm giving up as well. Something, a spiritual offering, which then avails the heart and the soul to immense graces. And that can give us that opportunity to turn the ship around on a personal level, to allow the badge of Christian to be seen in a more present way, to be open to the graces, because God is always offering graces to us. It's whether we want to cooperate with that grace, whether we want to be receptive to that grace. You know, God is never outdone in generosity. And what the devil wants us to look at right now is just to say, well, the spigot's been turned off. There's no generosity. So turn in on yourselves. Fill up on your popcorn or fill up on your candy. Binge watch this, binge watch that and whatnot. B you know, just complain and whatnot. Instead, the Lord is saying, okay, come to me, all you labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. To learn some lessons from him. To allow the graces that he is giving. To draw every ounce of grace that he offers. And to apply that in order to bring healing that is needed right now in our homes. You know, there are other reasons why the stay-at-home order really needs to be kind of done away with gradually. It's not just simply for the good of the economy. But there's a lot of problems that are going on in our homes right now. A lot of problems. There's a lot of abuse, a lot of violence and all that whatnot, because these, a lot of these families are not used to being together all the time. Sometimes people have avenues for escape and whatnot. And so there is a natural reason why. All the more reason why families and marriages and people need to be open to the graces that God is offering right now. God is in the midst of all of this. We have to see him for who he is and to draw those graces and to apply them so that then we will have that supernatural strength to be more patient with one another, to be more charitable with one another, to be more loving to one another. You know, one of the interesting things is that, you know, I don't necessarily agree with her. I love her dearly, but my grandmother, uh, my mother's mother, and I know my mom's watching right now, so don't worry, Mom, I'm not going to be airing any dirty laundry or anything about the family or whatnot. But my grandmother never became a Catholic. So she married a Catholic, my grandfather. And one of the things that my grandmother always used to say was the reason why she never became a Catholic is because she was very disturbed by their behavior after Mass. She would say, you know, they were all holy and pious in the church and whatnot, and then all of a sudden you got out in the parking lot and they're backstabbing one another, they can't wait to get out of the parking lot, and this, this, and that, and whatnot. Now, was that a good reason for my grandmother not to become Catholic? Absolutely not. But it is a valid point. There is something to be said there. 
You know, it's not just about being holy right here and now within these walls or the half hour that you spend in front of the live stream mass. That, that's not your only time to be holy. We're called to be holy all the time, to be Christian in every moment, not just in the time that we give to prayer, but in the work that we do, in the relationships that we have, to let that faith shine. As Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You don't put that light under a bushel basket. You allow that light to be seen in order that then that light gives glory to God, but also it sheds light into the lives of those around them and it plants the seeds for conversion. It's part of being a Christian. Let us now stand and turn to our Heavenly Father with our prayers and our needs. That our ministers in the church may be men filled with the Holy Spirit and faith, helping us to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who glory in the name of Christian may be the first to stand up for the life and dignity of every child of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who are among the flock of the Good Shepherd may listen to his voice, following him faithfully wherever he may lead, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, the imprisoned and addicted, the oppressed and those who grieve, that the hand of the Lord may be with them in healing, strength and grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Lord Jesus, who gives his sheep eternal life and does not allow them to perish, may take our faithful departed into his hands and bring them to his Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish family, we pray for all of our families, for all of our loved ones, all those who are near and dear to our hearts in this time of separation, in this time of fear and anxiety. We entrust them all to the sacred heart of our Good Shepherd in order that his love, his grace, and his mercy may sustain them and grant them peace, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all of our first responders, for all of our police and firefighters, for all of our doctors, our nurses, all those who are on the front lines, all those who are working in the hospitals, that the Blessed Mother may wrap them all in a mantle of her beautiful grace in order to grant them peace and protection, drawing them closer to the heart of her son, Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for all of those in the scientific and medical communities that inspired by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, that they may use their gifts in order to find a cure for this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the intentions of this Holy Mass, for Rachel Graham and for Calliope Sadzina, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for all the prayers and intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and we ask for all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy truth. 
Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. We love our Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. May this be the body of blood of Jesus Christ, for eternal life. To us, we receive it. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead, and so enter into his glory. Alleluia. And now let us pray together the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God, Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.